So one of my biggest issues when it comes to discussions about transmedicalism and transness in general is the issues of definition. It'd be an understatement to say that it's difficult to have a discussion or debate when neither party agrees on what the meaning of the main point of discussion actually means. This video doesn't exist to imply that all inclusionists disagree with this definition of dysphoria, that none of them experience these things, or to imply that every trans person must experience dysphoria in all of the following ways, but rather to expand people's understanding of what dysphoria is. Most inclusionists I've spoken to use the rhetoric of you don't have to hate yourself to be trans, or trans people shouldn't have to hate their bodies to assert that you don't need dysphoria to be trans, but I think that's a really shallow understanding of the way dysphoria is experienced and also can lead people who genuinely experience dysphoria to not be aware of it being as such, because it doesn't fall into this very narrow view that dysphoria is simply the feeling of hating your body. I'll be going over the diagnostic criteria for gender dysphoria, as well as ways that these feelings or experiences may actually affect trans people, both within and outside the bounds of what's often boiled down to simply dislike for your appearance. I'd also like to give a disclaimer that this video is in no way meant to imply that you must pursue medical transition to be trans, your medical choices are between you and your doctor, not me or anyone else, so let's just get into it. To start off simple and to the point, what is the actual diagnostic criteria for gender dysphoria? I'm just going to read this verbatim so it is clear-cut and straightforward. A marked incongruence between one's experienced slash expressed gender and assigned gender of at least six months duration as manifested by at least two or more of the following. A marked incongruence between one's experienced slash expressed gender and primary and or secondary sex characteristics, or in young adolescents, the anticipated secondary sex characteristics. A strong desire to be rid of one's primary and or secondary sex characteristics because of a marked incongruence with one's experienced slash expressed gender, or in young adolescents, a desire to prevent the development of the anticipated secondary sex characteristics. A strong desire for the primary and or secondary sex characteristics of the other gender. A strong desire to be of the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. A strong desire to be treated as the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. A strong conviction that one has the typical feelings and reactions of the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. The condition is associated with clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. I think it's worth noting something here. Only two of these criteria are required, none of which describe a hatred for your body. And while it does require distress or impairment in functioning, distress does not exclusively describe an agonizing self-hatred. Dysphoria can be experienced as hatred for your body, and for many people it is. But even when this is the case, that doesn't necessitate that you hate yourself or that you hate all of your body. As a personal example, I do really hate my chest. Top surgery is a very big priority for me at the moment, and I feel extremely uncomfortable, to say the least, not wearing a shirt, even around my partner or with a binder on. That doesn't mean I hate every aspect of my body or myself because of this one area causing me great discomfort that has caused me to come to hate it. It also doesn't mean everyone will have that discomfort manifested as hatred. A common way dysphoria is experienced is dissociation and depersonalization. Some people may not necessarily hate their body or become angry or depressed when treated as their birth sex, but rather feel detached from the experience or from their body. Feelings that memories of yourself when living as your assigned gender at birth may not feel like your own, that it's not you who experienced that, but someone else's memories and experiences, like you're watching a movie. That the part of your body that you're dysphoric about isn't yours, or that your body as a whole is not yours. Dissociating in environments where you're treated as your birth sex could feel like you're not really present or you're watching from an outsider's perspective. It's also not uncommon for dysphoria to fluctuate and change with age and as different transition steps are reached. It's not uncommon for trans men to feel much more dysphoric about their chest than their genitalia, but once receiving top surgery, their focus shifts to their genitalia and they become more dysphoric about it. Some people experience little to no dysphoria before puberty. While I do have memories of mild dysphoria in elementary school, it didn't become genuinely distressing until I was around 10 to 11 for that reason, especially growing up in a house that had no regard or care for gender roles and being allowed to just wear, play with, or hang out with people regardless of gender expectations. It wasn't until my body started to visibly not match what I saw myself as in a way that couldn't be as easily ignored that my dysphoria became a source of noticeable distress. 
Dysphoria also doesn't need to be an all-encompassing agony and suicidality. Distress and impairment can be anxiety, self-consciousness, significant discomfort, etc. Many trans people will get uncomfortable or squeamish hearing their natal genitalia being described with terminology that's usually used for their birth sex, or may feel uncomfortable while actively using it, but otherwise not really think about it unless it's kind of a topic that's right in your face. Feeling anxious that you'll be misgendered or being uncomfortable and upset when it happens. There are a lot of more minor or situational ways that dysphoria may come up that aren't just a constant feeling of suffering and anger at your body. I'd also like to talk about gender euphoria here for a moment. It's a very common statement that you can just have gender euphoria, you don't need dysphoria, but I think this is something that's really misrepresented. I want to note first and foremost that gender dysphoria is a medical term, while gender euphoria is not. But personally, based on the diagnostic criteria and actually hearing the way this experience is discussed, gender euphoria seems to be simply the alleviation of dysphoria. The diagnostic criteria categorizes a strong desire to be the other gender and a strong desire to be treated as the other gender as two separate and legitimate symptoms of gender dysphoria. Many people who use the phrase gender euphoria tend to be the same people who fall into the category that see dysphoria as some genre of self-hatred or hating your body. I frankly think a lot of these people are dysphoric, do not recognize their dysphoria as such, and then that, when that more subtle or complex feeling is alleviated, they are obviously more comfortable and happy. I will say there are obviously people who truly do not experience dysphoria and say they do experience euphoria. And I'm sorry if this comes off as insensitive, but I genuinely believe in those cases, it's simply the fact that we as humans like to be validated. And whether this validation was in the case of gender or something else, that feeling would exist regardless. I don't mean this to say that anyone is intentionally lying to get attention because attention feels good, but more so that they've fallen into this echo chamber by happenstance of people all screaming you are valid at each other and gotten validation that they may lack elsewhere. Mind you, I don't think this is the case for 99.9% .9 of people who are a part of this crowd, but I found it worth mentioning. Dysphoria can manifest differently for different people. For a lot of people, it is constant pain and discomfort, and for other people, it's persistent dissociation or just regular but manageable discomfort. It's more severe about certain things for certain people. We're all individuals, and there's no one-size-fits-all way that this is experienced. It can be really detrimental to simply boil down dysphoria to hating your body. Not only can it prevent people who have dysphoria from working to manage it by convincing them they don't have it at all, but people who experience it profoundly in a way that doesn't fit in the box of hating your body may come to doubt their own experiences and cause needless distress. It's also caused many people to be essentially told to work on themselves, to simply get over it, as though it's a choice being made that can be actively cured by positive thinking and self-love. The amount of comments I've received on this channel from inclusionists telling me it's freeing to learn to stop caring about passing, that I don't have to hate myself to be trans, that I need to work on my own body image instead of saying we should just all hate ourselves, that it's my fault that I'm dysphoric because I'm not body positive enough, or even that my dysphoria is just an extension of my eating disorder. Many of these thought processes are just reworded versions of what's essentially the point of conversion therapy. It's a choice rhetoric. It's part of what also confuses me about inclusionists comparing us to TERFs when we're here saying this is real, it's not a choice, and transition is how we help it, versus saying dysphoria is a personal flaw or failing, that you're mentally unwell and hate your body, that you're just negative, instead of understanding that no one would choose to experience dysphoria. And it all stems from just a flagrant misunderstanding of the words they're using and the people they claim to be on the side of. And, well, lastly, it's just not what the word means. Gender dysphoria is not synonymous with I hate myself. And I feel like that's a much more harmful perception to have than saying you need it to be trans, and that it's a much broader category of experiences than what it's often described to be. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Pa de. The children think too much They finally a fear of God Always asking questions they should only Away. Sun.